In this practical technique video, we're going to look at the technique of recrystallization. So where do we use this technique? We use it to obtain pure crystals of an organic solid. There are a number of core practicals where we have to synthesize an organic solid, for example, the synthesis of aspirin. And when we do that, in the reaction mixture, as well as the product that we've made, there are going to be lots of contaminants. So, for example, there are going to be some contaminants of leftover reactants, potentially. There could also be acid if we've used it as a catalyst or acid that could be a product. It could be other products of the reaction. So there are lots and lots of things that would mean that the crystals that we get are not very pure immediately after we've just filtered them out. So recrystallization relies on finding a solvent for which the solid that we want, let's say aspirin, is soluble when it's hot, but relatively insoluble or almost insoluble when that solvent is cold. And we'll explain why that is when we look at the techniques and what we're going to do in order to purify our crystals. And it's a really, really good process. It doesn't seem like we're doing very much when we actually do it in the lab. We just kind of dissolve some crystals, we let it cool down, and then we get crystals back. But it can really make the difference between this kind of goopy, sticky white stuff and these beautiful fine needles, which is some aspirin that my students purified recently. So what are we trying to remove when we do recrystallization? We have two types of impurities in our reaction mixture. We have soluble or more soluble than the solid that we're trying to get. And we have stuff that is more insoluble or pretty much completely insoluble. So let's think about those separately. Soluble impurities, they will stay dissolved. So we're talking about stuff that dissolves really well in the solvent. Let's say the solvent is water. Even when the solvent is ice cold, they will stay in solution. And this could be acid. Of course, acids are extremely soluble. It could be inorganic salts that are the products. Maybe we neutralized the acid and we made some salts as a product of that reaction. We could even have maybe if we made an ester like aspirin, we could have some unreacted alcohol and alcohols are relatively soluble because of the OH groups. And then we could have, it's less likely, so we could also have insoluble impurities. Insoluble impurities are kind of things that got in the reaction mixture by accident. So we're talking about things that will not dissolve even when the solvent is hot. The kinds of things we're talking about are not really chemicals. We could have accidentally got some amputee bumping granules from our reflux flask into that if we did a reaction under reflux. We could, if we filtered off our solid and scraped it off the filter paper a bit violently, we could have a bit of filter paper in there. We could have a bit of dust that was just on the inside of the glassware that we were using, or even if somebody like was poking a splint around, we could have a bit of soot in there. There are all kinds of bits of insoluble impurities that could be there. Generally, good lab techniques means that they shouldn't be there, but they might be there. Okay, so how do we remove both of these types of impurities and get the highest yield of solid? So the most important thing that we do with our solid that we've already filtered out of our reaction mixture is we add the minimum amount of hot solvent to dissolve the crystals. So the solvent should be as hot as we can get it without it literally bubbling and boiling and disappearing. We don't want it to completely evaporate. We want it to be nice and hot. We'll probably keep heating the container while we add the solvent just to make sure that it stays as hot as it can be. And this is to get the most saturated solution of solid that we can possibly get. So we want the highest concentration of our solid that could possibly dissolve because that will ensure that we get the maximum amount of crystals back out. If we make our solution too dilute, if we add too much solvent or it's not hot enough, then we're going to have to add too much. And then when we cool it down, we won't be able to get as many crystals back out again. So that's why we add the minimum amount of hot solvent. While it's still hot, we should really filter it. Some sunblock schemes, etc., or practical procedures will miss this step out. 
The reason that we should do this is to remove insoluble impurities that we talked about, such as the anti-bumping granules or the bits of dust or whatever. So in theory, we should do that and there shouldn't really be much on the filter paper because there shouldn't really be a lot of insoluble impurities. But this step will make sure that they're not in my final solid. So what I'm now left with in my sort of hot filtrate is the compound that I made, for example, aspirin. And also dissolved in that filtrate is going to be all of my really soluble impurities like my acid or my leftover reagents and things like that. So I've got that filtrate. What we're going to do now is we're going to put that probably on ice or certainly at least let it cool down. But most of the time we will cool it down quite rapidly on ice and that will allow the crystals to form of the solid, for example, aspirin that I'm trying to obtain. And they will be much, much purer than they were before. And the reason they will be so much purer is because those really soluble impurities that we talked about will still be in the solution. So they won't be in my crystals. They won't come out of solution. The only thing that should come out of solution is going to be those crystals of what I want. And that's how we get our really nice, clean crystals. So, of course, we now are going to have to remove those crystals again by filtration. This is also the time that we tend to use filtering under reduced pressure or vacuum filtration. So we've got a diagram here that shows the apparatus from the side. And there's also a photo so you can see what it might look like from the top. So what we've got here is a Buckner funnel. It's different to a normal funnel in a couple of ways. One of the ways that you'll see is it's very, very wide and completely has a flat bottom there. So it doesn't have a slope to it. There's a little plastic bit at the bottom with holes that allow the liquid to go through. It fits into the sidearm flask using a bung. So there is a seal there. And that's important because we basically need to create suction by attaching the flask to a vacuum. The filter paper lays completely flat. So you just get a circle of filter paper that fits into that funnel perfectly. So there is no need to fold. This helps also with getting the solid off the filter paper afterwards. So you're not trying to dig into the folds of filter paper like you might do otherwise. And then the side arm of this flask is connected to a vacuum pump. That could be a special vacuum pump that is made for the lab, or it could just be something that you fit on a tap, which uses like a change in pressure in water in order to create a vacuum to create suction. So it just sucks air through. And the net result of that is just that filtration is faster. This does not help you get any purer solid. It just allows you to do these steps because there are three filtration steps in this practical. You've got to filter your crude sort of impure solid out of the reaction mixture. Then you've got to, after you've redissolved it in that hot solvent, you should probably filter it to remove insoluble impurities. And then at the end, when you've put it on ice and got your solid back out, you're going to filter it again. So there's a lot of filtration steps and it's a very fine solid. So it can take a really, really long time. So it's very, very useful technique. You're also finally, when you've got your nice pure crystals, going to wash through with some pure cold solvent. So it'll be not, it'll probably be on ice at the same time as your crystals are. And that again is just to make sure anything that stays in solution that's going to get washed through. So all your acid and your inorganic impurities will go through into the filtrate. Then you've got your crystals. So just as a summary, the property of the solvent is sometimes asked about. So the property, the important property, the solvent, we choose it. The solid is soluble in the hot solvent and insoluble in the cold solvent. It's never going to be perfect uh, because solubility is not a black or white situation. It's a sort of range according to temperature. But that's the ideal. And then our technique is we add the minimum amount of hot solvent to dissolve the solid. We're going to filter it while it's still hot to remove any insoluble impurities. We're going to cool that filtrate on ice to form the crystals back out of solution. We're going to filter again 
so that we remove our nice pure crystals. We're going to wash with cold solvent, which removes any of those soluble impurities. And then we're going to leave the crystals to dry. It's quite important that we don't try to heat those crystals or anything like that because they're likely to decompose. They are relatively sensitive organic compounds.